this is May Yu, and welcome to Fun Friday. Every Friday, I try to do something new, fun, or challenging. Thank you very much for all your likes and comments in my previous video. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Some of you have been suggesting for me to turn famous sidekick characters into beautiful princesses, and I have to say I love this idea. Uh, it fits really well with my other princess reimagining videos from before. So let's see how I can reimagine sidekicks as if they were the main characters in their own stories. This is gonna be really interesting. I know, Miko, you're gonna look really different. So Miko from Pocahontas is one of my most favorite sidekicks out of all the Disney movies and I think uh, he's gonna be really funny to, for me to turn into a uh, princess. Right away I wanted to get his iconic like kind of the side fur. I was thinking what can I do to kind of remind myself of those wide cheeks and after some concept sketches I came up with this hairstyle which kind of fans out and I think that's perfect because it reminds me of the cheeks but it's also really nicely incorporated into like a more human design and then as for her dress I had some really interesting ideas and I could not wait to try it out. Some of you have been asking me in previous videos, uh, you know, like, how do I make my lines so smooth looking and steady? I guess you were asking because you wanted to improve your own line art or line work. And some of you did tell me that you found it harder for you to control your hand movements. And for me, I basically, I like to keep my wrist kind of loose, but I hold my pen firmly but not like too rigid so then I have a nice movement and basically you just need to practice and not be too nervous that's the that's the key for this whole thing um, so in case you want to you know get better with your line work just keep practicing and don't be too nervous don't be too hard on yourself practice does make perfect Early on in the Miko princess design process, I was thinking about how am I going to like incorporate the rings of the tail into my dress design and I love how the like eventually I made the dress with a lot of these like stripes in the design so it reminds me of the tail but it's not so like uh, it could look like a nice like fashion design as well. I also gave her some serious eyeshadow action in there um, for her sides to make them kind of look more triangular on the ends. So then that way it kind of reminds me of Miko's dark eye patches. I really enjoyed getting the different grays and the shades in her hair because I think once I added the colors in, it really, it really reminded me of Miko's like different um, like color schemes and just the fact that she has this nice like light streak against her darker gray like hair. It you know that contrast really pops out at me. For all the fans out there, let me know which Disney sidekick is your favorite amongst all of the movies or shows uh, and then let me know why. For me, I really like Miko. One, because I really love raccoons. Uh, I sometimes I actually have raccoons sometimes in the backyard, for example, so I, I don't know, I just think they're so cute and cuddly. Uh, so I guess that's just, you know, from a uh, real life experience, but also I just think this little rascal is so rascally. Uh, he's always eating these cookies and I don't know, just 
you know, Pocahontas was a really big part of my childhood. So I'm glad that I'm able to incorporate Miko into one of my videos. When I was coloring in the like the stripes and the rings in the dress, I was mindful of what kind of texture I kind of wanted to emulate in this design so I didn't want the fabric to all kind of look the same I wanted some pieces of this dress to look kind of shimmery or shiny so I left some white areas when as I was um, coloring in these areas here and then that just really brings the shine and just you know like the effect just looks so pretty I am digging that limited color palette. All right, Olaf as a princess, let's do this. I think right off the bat, in my early stage of this concept design, I was thinking, how am I going to make Olaf and his features kind of fit a more natural looking face design? Like his eyes look pretty human, but then the rest of him just does not look human at all. So the, the difference between his design and, you know, like a princess design that I was imagining in my head, I just, you know, at first I didn't really know how to fill that gap. But as I was sketching, I eventually came up with, um, you know, a human design that I felt looked like Olaf, but it also looks like, you know, she could be like a royal, you know, like her own, uh, the own, her own main character in her own story. Something that was really important to me was to keep the general like facial features similar in my Olaf princess design. So I made the eyebrows thick and I made those eyes like those big googly eyes really round with those giant like pupils in there. And then as for her nose, so I was thinking about uh, giving her a pointy nose that's slightly larger than what I usually tend to draw from my other princess designs. Um, but I still think that she looks really pretty in her own way. And then as for her mouth, I wanted to keep the big grin. And I really liked how I incorporated the, you know, the little sticks that Olaf has on his head. And I made them into like this tiara. When it came to designing her dress, I knew I needed to do something a little bit different. Something that I usually don't do as a princess design, like in terms of the shape of the dress. Because Olaf has this nice round little body, I wanted to kind of get that shape in there as well. So I decided to draw the dress with this giant like poofy area and it kind of comes down and then fans out into the fabric. I think that shape is something quite unique. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll remember how I like reimagined Elsa and Anna in different ways in my other uh, art challenges. And I think this time might be the first time I've used Olaf in an art challenge. So I'm really glad that I kind of like got the trio in there. Thank you all again for continuing to color in my coloring books and posting your work on Instagram with the hashtag MayYourArt. I'm seeing more and more new fans joining this community all the time and I'm so happy to see such a beautiful variety of coloring styles, techniques, color schemes and materials used. I also noticed more and more of you are doing buddy colors with other fans on Instagram and then tagging each other. That's so awesome to see how different people can take the same image in their own unique ways. And I, you know, just, I just want to have a huge thank you to all of you for supporting each other's coloring creations. Wherever you are in the world, we're all connected with this love for art and coloring and creativity. In case you haven't yet, I encourage you to get some of my coloring books and join this hashtag to share your work with others and see how others are coloring those images. It's great that we have this community where we can learn from each other and support each other. You know, to me, coloring is truly something that is both relaxing, calming, but also very functional, like I'm thinking creatively and I'm using my mind. I'm problem solving in a creative way because I'm thinking of how I'm going to color balance things, you know, what to do with the color schemes, the shading and controlling the strokes. 
so it's a great stress reliever. But I also feel like I'm accomplishing something, and that piece that I was working on, you know, when I'm finished, it's there forever. It's like a stamp in time for me to look back on and remember that nice experience I had creating it. I know many of you got all of my coloring books. I'm so proud of you. It's like you've got a growing collection of these wonderful artwork and experiences. And as you complete the images, it's like you're making your own art books. So personal and so motivating. Keep up the great work, everyone. I look forward to seeing and hearting more of your posts on Instagram. And if you have my books, please also rate it in the Amazon reviews as this really helps other people know how you feel about them. Now I have over 70 books on my Mayu bookstore on Amazon. The link is in the video description. Happy coloring. I also have a new announcement coming up in a few moments. She looks cool. All right, for the next sidekick that I'm going to reimagine into a pretty princess, I'm going to do something a little bit different with my design. And I think it's going to be really fun to see how I'm going to turn Genie into a beautiful princess. So similar thing with the Frozen characters, I've drawn most of the main Aladdin characters so far, except Genie in my art challenges. So I'm really glad that I am doing this. I thought it would be a nice touch to get some hints of the like the magic lamp in the design somehow and then as for the like how the princess looks like like herself I wanted to keep her frame kind of uh, curvier and fuller so then it's I'm not changing the character too much I'm very mindful of that I want Genie to still look like you know Genie but now he's a beautiful princess For her face, I decided to design her features like this. I wanted her to look more personal and distinctive. So I drew her nose and eyes in a way that's going to remind me of Genie. And then for her mouth, I wanted her to have this nice big grin. Like she's this very approachable, sociable, happy, like, you know, like a friend that you can count on. And then I really wanted to exaggerate her ponytail just to get that little swoosh in there. And then for the end, I curled it to, you know, like just a, a little nice nod to Genie's curled goatee. For my design, besides using Genie's colors, I'll also be adding more blue variations to make my princess design look the way that I've envisioned. I know many of you have my first and second coloring books, Garden of Dreams and Pop Culture Reimagined, and some of you told me that you like these titles in a smaller size since you'll be traveling this summer or going on road trips and visiting family and friends. To help you, I made mini sizes for my coloring books. They're 5 by 7.8 inches, so it's a lot smaller and portable than my regular square size coloring books. Now you can color anytime, anywhere. With these handy, portable pocket editions, you can fit them in your bag or purse. These new mini sizes can be your traveling companions. They're light and portable, and it's great to have them wherever you go because you never know when inspiration might hit. You could see something on your trips that might inspire you to let out your ideas by coloring. Also, instead of waiting for your car or plane, you can color in these mini sizes and create amazing artwork. It's a fun mental break, and it can be handy for stress relief while traveling. 
If you're traveling with friends or family members, it'll be cool to color together along the way. And these coloring books can become fun experiences you share with other people, and they make great memories. I've also made the large soft covers and large hard covers of my first and second coloring books as well, since others have been asking for them. And I know some of you like to collect my entire coloring book series as these larger sizes because they give you more room to color. Like my regular size coloring books, these new sizes work well with a wide variety of your colored pencils, markers, gel pens, and crayons. I've also seen some fans use watercolor pencils in my coloring books, so feel free to experiment. They're on the Mayu Bookstore on Amazon. I now have over 70 books and counting. Yay! The link's in the video description. In case you don't see these new sizes available in your region, keep checking back to the Mayu Bookstore. Follow me on Amazon so you'll be the first to know when a new book is released, sometimes before I even announce them on my YouTube channel. If you have questions, Amazon's customer support is available to help. I hope you enjoyed these new sizes. Happy coloring! For this genie princess, I decided to make the color scheme more leaning towards the blues because I felt this will give my design some like a different look to it. And I really like how the blues merge into each other. I think it's very calming. Let me know which sidekick princess is your favorite and what are your name ideas? As always, comment below. I love seeing how creative you are. Also, which other characters or sidekicks would you like to see me reimagine as princesses in the future? Let me know and I'll try my best to do the ones I can. Thanks for supporting my art and my channel by smashing the like button, subscribing, and hitting the bell notification so you won't miss my future videos. I've created a fun playlist just for you so you can binge watch all of my other challenges. Link is in the video description and I'll see you really soon in a few moments. There are now over 70 books on the Mayu Bookstore on Amazon, all in one convenient place. The link is in the video description. See you next week, I've got another Fun Friday video. Till next time.